In this session, we will learn about the overview of contracts. So, I have divided this video on contracts into four sections. The first section, we will learn about the overview of contract. Second section, we will create a quantity contract and create a release order with respect to the contract. In the third section, we will create a material group contract and create a release order with respect to the contract. And in section four, we will create a value contract and create a release order with respect to the contract. So, in the overview of contracts, the first thing we should know is outline agreement. What is the outline agreement? So, a outline purchase agreement is a longer term arrangement with a vendor covering the supply of materials or services for a predefined period and a predefined total purchase order quantity or certain total purchase value. An outline agreement is of two types. One is the contract. Second is the scheduling agreement. What is the difference between these two? In case of contract, there are no predefined delivery dates, but contract release order is created with respect to the contract each time the material is required. In scheduling agreement, we send predefined delivery dates for the required quantity or a delivery schedule for the scheduling agreement. So, using automatic material planning, we can use the contracts and scheduling agreements also in automatic material requirement planning. So, the requirement planning can be set up in such a way that the contract item is automatically assigned to a requisition item as the source of supply. However, this requisition must subsequently be converted into a purchase order. We call it as a contract lease order. In the case of the scheduling agreement, it is possible to directly generate scheduling agreement delivery schedule lines from the planning run, thus reducing purchasing department processing time. So, we can use the contract and scheduling agreements also in automatic material planning. So, the transaction code to create, change or display contract is ME31K, ME32, ME32K and ME33K. ME33 so, you need to add K here. Okay. Let me add K. Okay. Then, use of contracts. So, what are the uses of contracts? The Contracts can be created with or without reference to an outline agreement requisition, an RFQ or another contract. This is important. How we can create the contract? Various item categories can be used. The item category influences document field control. If the contract item is for a stock material, the corresponding views and data of the material master record must have been created. If the item is for a consumable material, the account assignment data may already be stored in the contract. We can use account assignment category U in the contract, but the account assignment category has to be specified when we create the release order with respect to the contract. The release documentation for the contract item is updated for each purchase order item created with respect to the contract. The system provides the following data for each release order. The number of the PO and the relevant item, the order date, the order quantity, and the order value. The release documentation also includes the total quantity or value already released and the target quantity in comparison with the still open quantity or the target value in comparison with the still open value. So, how to display the release documentation? We can go to the display contract in ME33K and enter the contract number, press enter, then from the menu bar, you have to go in the path item, statistics, release documentation and we will be able to uh, see the release documentation. I have shown one example here in the uh, screenshot. So, I have a contract 46000 ending with 123 and here, if you see the quantity release to date is 130 piece. So, with respect to this contract, we have one purchase order. Uh, in which uh, there are, uh, we have one contract release order in which there are two items, line item 10, 50 pieces, that is line item 20, 80 pieces. So, the quantity release to date is 130, 50 plus 80 is 130, but the target quantity in the quantity contract is 5000 pieces. So, the open target quantity will be 5000 minus 130, that will be 4870 pieces. So, this is how the release documentation is displayed from the contract. Now, contract types. What are the types of contracts? There are two types of contracts. One is a quantity contract. Contract. Second is the value contract. What is a quantity contract? 
the contract is created for a specific target quantity that must be supplied by a vendor within a specified period of time. After specifying the validity period of the contract in the header data, we must enter the target quantity at the item level. See, you remember one important point. In case of a quantity contract, the validity period will be in the header data, but the target quantity will be the, in the item level data. Next is the quantity value contract. The contract is created for a specific target value for which the vendor must supply the materials for that target value within a specific period of time. In addition to the validity period, the target value must be specified in the header data of the value contract. So in case of a value contract, both the validity period as well as the target value both must be updated in the, I mean the both, both will come in the header data, headers. Contract for a material group. So we have two item categories, M, material unknown and W, material group which are available for use in contracts. These item categories are used for groups of materials. So what are these group of materials we will know. Item categories M and W. Let us see what are these. The item categories M and W are intended for the entry of contract items without specification of the material numbers. So we can use these two item categories without using any material master record numbers. So what is this item category M? Materials which are similar and having the same price belong to item category M. These can be materials with material master records or materials without material master records. Example of use of item category M. We have a contract for many types of writing paper like lined, squared, blank, two, four hole, pre-punch, etc. The different types of paper have the same weight, the same quality and the same price. So, Materials which are similar and having the same price plan to item category M. So I have given an example here. When entering the contract item of category M, we enter the short description, material group, target quantity, unit of measure and price, but no material number. The short description with specific details of material must be entered in the contract list order. For example, lined or two hole punch, etc. We can also use materials with a material master record against this contract item in the release order provided, provided that the material group and purchase order unit of measure are same. This mean, I mean to say that we can use material, materials with material master records also, but the material group and the order that is the unit of order should match with the material group. Item category W. What is item category W? Materials belonging to the same material group but with different prices belong to the item category W. Item category W can be used in value contracts. Okay, we can use it in value contracts. Example of item category W. We have a contract for various types of cables. The contract is to cover all types of cables supplied by the vendor. However, the exact type is only determined when a purchase order is created against the contract for a certain cable. Instead of creating one contract item for each type of cable to, in the vendors list, we can enter item category W and the appropriate material group, for example cable. From the short text it would then be clear that the contract item covers all types of cables supplied by the vendor. Each release order issued against this contract will have the exact specification of cable type and quantity, for example double shielded 1 meter or single shielded 5 meter, just example of this, and price. I mean to say that in the contract list order, we should give the proper description, proper specification of the material in the description and also the price. When entering the contract item, we enter only the short text and material group. We do not enter the target quantity or price. It is possible to enter additional conditions. For example, we can enter a discount in the header conditions if the vendor grants a discount on all POs referencing the contract. Suppose if the vendor is ready to give some discount for all the materials against this contract, then we can add that discount in the header, in the header conditions. The discount is calculated automatically when a contract release order is created. So when we create a contract release order, this, this discount will be taken into account in the pricing procedure. The price, the target quantity and the material number are not, are not specified until we create a release order. The relevant material master record must be assigned to the same material group as the contract item referenced. If 
if the contract release order does not contain a material number, it must have a valid account assignment category such as the cost center and GL account and details of material in material description. Whether we use material with master record or material without master record, but both must belong to the same material group. This is very important here. In case of the item category W. Okay. Let me in the meantime, the word has hanged a little bit. In the meantime, I can just show you some contract, display contract. Show you one. Yeah, now the word has come back. Okay, uh, let us go to the next point. Now the word is active now. Uh, centrally agreed contract. What is the centrally agreed contract? So, if a company has a central purchasing organization covering several plants, we can negotiate better conditions and create contracts by which we can procure for all plants assigned to the purchasing organization. This is called a Central, centrally agreed contract. The plant is not specified until the contract release order is created. All plants covered by the purchasing organization can procure against a centrally agreed contract. In the case of plant specific contracts, a release order can be can only be created for the relevant plant. In a centrally agreed contract, we can create different conditions for individual plants and release order can be created for any plant assigned to the purchasing organization. Plant conditions in centrally agreed contracts. So, I mean to say, we can maintain different conditions for different plants in a centrally agreed contract. The centrally agreed contracts enable us to specify separate conditions for each receiving plant. This is because of different transportation costs for different routes and distances for the different plants. Vendors may assume a variety of roles in the procurement process such as ordering orders, invoicing party or forwarder or carrier. These are referred to in purchasing as partner roles. We can maintain different partner roles either in the vendor master record or in each individual contract. The partners that we can define in the vendor master record are valid for a certain purchasing organization. In addition to the partners that are valid for a purchasing organization, we can create different partners for individual plants or vendor sub-ranges in the vendor master record. If the partners have already been defined in the vendor master record, they are pulled from there into the contract as default values. However, we can also assign partner roles for the first time in the contract. What I mean to say is, we can maintain these partner roles either in the vendor master record or also we can uh, maintain them when creating the contract. So, I suggest we maintain them in, in the contract because uh, let it be uh, it is, uh, clear that that is uh, we are going to use that vendor for that with uh, we are going to use the particular partner role of that vendor in that contract. Partner roles in centrally agreed contract. So, example of use of partner roles, I will tell you, I will tell you how, how this. Goods supplied by vendor 1000, for example, are delivered to different carriers. In the vendor master record, I mean, are delivered by different carriers. In the vendor master record, the various carriers are defined as follows. Carrier S01 delivers to plant 1000 only, whereas carrier S02 delivers to plant 2000 only. So, we have different carriers for different plants. If a buyer wishes to issue a release order for material, some material M01 with reference to a centrally agreed contract with vendor 1000, he or she enters the key of the plant for which the material is to be procured. If this plant is 1000, the system determines creditor S01 as the carrier on the basis of the assignation in the vendor master record. Similarly, if the material is to be procured for plant 2000, the system determines S02 as the carrier from the vendor master record. Create plant specific partner in vendor master record. So, how to create this one? This is the path. So, we can go to SK02, that is the change mode. If the vendor is already created, we can go to change mode and do it. So, we, uh, what we have to do in the on the partner role screen in the vendor master record, we have to go in this path extras alternative 
data i will make it as a okay alternate to data then um, then enter the plant and the create alternate to data screen and select partner rules choose continue the change vendor partner rules screen appears and then you can you can put the uh, partner symbol and vendor number and save create partner in contract so when we are creating a partner uh, sorry when we are creating a contract there directly we can input the partner role of the vendor by going from header partners the data retention level partner screen appears to create cross purchasing organization partners select the first line and choose display level we can create new partners via new entries to create plant specific partners enter the relevant plant on the data retention level partner screen and choose enter the next screen to appear is maintain partners enter the desired partner and return to the item overview for the contract and in the item overview input the details material quantity whatever it is and then save so uh, this one how to uh, maintain the uh, partner role of the vendor when creating or changing the contract i will show you when we are creating a, a when we are doing the exercises on the contract so this is about the overview of contract in the next section we will create a contract we will we will create a quantity contract and then we will create a value contract then we will create a material group contract and also we will create a release order with respect to the contract thank you for watching my video please watch my next videos on creation of the contracts uh, for quantity contract uh, value contract and material group contract and also creating the release orders with respect to the contracts please give me your valuable comments likes and please subscribe to my channel and please click the bell icon so that you will get notification of my upcoming videos on so many scenarios in mm as well as lot of exercises on various sections and topics in mm